got to show you something. I need this ladder. So this here is a passive infrared motion sensor. It's a standard one from a normal home alarm system. And I've got loads of them scattered around the house. And I use them in Home Assistant to detect when there's motion going on in any of the rooms in my house. The main thing I use them for is for light automation. So as I can turn on the lights when I walk into a room. But there is one massive problem with this type of motion sensor. And that is if you stand still for too long, it doesn't know you're there anymore and if you're using that for lighting automations then if you stand still then your lights will turn off. Now you can put a clumsy workaround in your automations for situations like that and it usually includes setting a really long timeout for rooms where you might be sitting still for long periods of time. So in our dining room and kitchen for example we have a 15 minute timeout. If motion isn't detected for 15 minutes then the lights will turn off. This mostly works but in places like our living room where you can be sitting down for hours watching in a film or something, this doesn't really work at all. That's where millimeter wave sensors come in because these are true present sensors. This is the new Lincoln Link eMotion Ultra present sensor, and a massive thank you to Lincoln Link for sending this to me to have a play with. This is not a sponsored video, but they did send me the sensor for free. And before we take a proper look at it, let's go over exactly what this sort of present sensor is. With these types of sensors, you don't need to move for it to detect you. It will know you're there even if you're sitting perfectly still. There are quite a few different present sensors available now that use millimeter wave technology. There's the Link and Link range of products, of course, including the eMotion Ultra that I'm going to take a look at today. These all connect to Wi-Fi and require a power supply. You have the Acara products like the FP1E that's Zigbee connected or the FP2 which uses Wi-Fi, both requiring a power supply. And there's the Everything Presence products from Lewis who runs the Everything Smart Home YouTube channel. These are Wi-Fi connected too and need a power supply, but they are also ESP home devices designed to work specifically with Home Assistant. In fact, as an alternative to the Link and Link sensors, you should really check these out because the Everything Presence one has a ton of sensors all built into one device. And you can even flash it with your own custom ESP home configuration if you want to. Now, the the one thing that these sensors all have in common are that they require a power supply. That's because millimeter wave is very power hungry. And until we get products like the Acara FP300 to have a play with that was announced at CES earlier this year, we won't know what true wireless millimeter wave sensors are like. But we're here to talk about the Link and Link eMotion Ultra today. And this brand of sensors has one very unique selling point, MQTT. This means that connecting the sensors to Home Assistant is done in the way that all Wi-Fi devices should connect. So normally, to connect a smart device to Home Assistant, you would have to find an integration for that particular manufacturer. That might be built into Home Assistant, or there might be a developer out there who has created and maintains an integration. You are very much dependent on that developer to keep it up to date, make sure it works with the latest version of Home Assistant and that sort of thing, or hope that they add new features promptly. But with MQTT, you don't have to worry about any of that. If you install the Mosquito add-on in Home Assistant, then that acts as a messaging hub for your smart home. Devices and services can talk to Mosquito using the MQTT protocol, and that also communicates with Home Assistant. MQTT even allows Home Assistant to automatically create devices and entities when it detects messages from them. And that's how Link and Link devices work. You connect your Link and Link devices to your network using the Link and Link app. You then tell them your MQTT broker details, and those devices then talk directly to Home Assistant. Totally locally, no third party at all, direct to Home Assistant on your local network and using a standardized open protocol. It's how the smart home should be for Wi-Fi devices. So the great thing about this sensor is it not only knows that you are in the room, but it knows exactly where you are in the room. So I've put the sensor just up on top of a cupboard up there. It's not the best place cosmetically. Um, I think I've got to have a good think about where is best to place it. I might 
put it up here somewhere. Uh, but it's very important that it can see the whole room without any obstacles in the way, so as it knows where you are. Now, I've got the app open here, and you can see just on there, it's detected me in that little yellow zone. But if I was to walk around here, you can see it's detecting me moving into a different position. That is pretty cool. And if I walk over to this area here, this is my utility room, you should see it goes into this little purple zone here. And that's because you can see these colored zones here. I've actually defined each of those zones as, well, a different zone. So as it knows if you're in those and it can do different automations based on where you are in the room. To show you properly how this zoning feature works, I've set up a little demonstration in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to walk into, let's turn it around, you see that blue area there? That blue area there is just over here and it's by this work surface here. If I walk into this area and stand here, for a few seconds it should turn on the lights underneath the counter. Now that is quite a useful automation because if I now walk away from there, now this will take a minute so I'm going to cut the camera for a second. And there we go, it's turned off. See, now this has been bugging me for a while actually because whenever I do any work here at night, there we go, it's turned on again, uh, the shadow from the ceiling above me um, sort of casts over here from my own head. So I can't see what I'm doing here. So this was actually quite a useful little gadget to install. All it is, is I'll turn the camera around again, lots of spinning around of the camera. Under here is an IKEA light bar. Um, it's like an LED strip that I've fitted and I've had to run the cable up inside the cupboard there and then above the cupboard, if I can show you there, is a little control box um, and that connects to Zigbee and then Zigbee to MQTT and then that connects to Home Assistant and then I get all the automations and the automation is triggered by the little millimetre wave uh, motion sensor that's sitting up there. The eMotion Ultra has a few other tricks up its sleeve too. It has a built-in light level sensor and a handy IR blaster, just like the previous eMotion Max model. But on top of that, it now has a temperature and humidity sensor too. It also acts as a hub for Bluetooth devices. And although the product's description on the web says that this includes things like finger bots, curtain openers, and door locks, the only accessories that they have at the moment that I can see are a door sensor and a temperature sensor. Link and Link actually sent me this tiny little temperature sensor to try out, and it's probably one of the easiest setup processes ever. I pulled the battery tab from out of there, and the app just detected it and connected it to the eMotion Ultra. Now, this little sensor is really quite neat. For a temperature sensor with a display, it's really compact, not much larger than the Sonoff and Akara Zigbee sensors that I've already got around my home. And the app interface is pretty intuitive too, because all of those sensors, that's the built-in ones in the eMotion Ultra and the Bluetooth paired ones, just appeared as a list of separate items. There's no having to hunt around in the device to find them. Now that could be both a blessing and a curse, I imagine. If you started to build up dozens of Link and Link devices and sensors, and it could start to get quite messy. But I reckon if you're using these in Home Assistant anyway, then that really doesn't matter. The one down the downside of this specific temperature sensor though is it really is an add-on to the present sensor. Despite it using Bluetooth, I can't see any way to use it standalone, which is a real shame. But if you have an eMotion sensor or the eRemote from Link and Link, then you can just use those to relay the data back to Home Assistant over MQTT. So clearly knowing if there's someone in a room, even if they're not moving, is a very useful thing when it comes to automations. And knowing where they are specifically in a room takes that usefulness to a whole other level. And that got me thinking about what else these millimeter wave sensors could help out with. I've tried using pressure sensor mats under mattresses to detect when I'm in bed, so as I can run automations to shut things down at night or turn things on in the morning when I get up. But the thing is, I found that these are just not reliable when used under modern memory foam mattresses. They sometimes detect you lying down, but Overall, they end up giving sporadic results. But a millimeter wave present sensor can tell where you are in your room. 
It will know if you are lying in bed or just walking around, maybe getting dressed. So it can run automations if you've been in the bed zone for a specific amount of time, or run other automations if you've left your bed in the morning. If there are two of you sharing a room, then it will know whether or not both of you are in bed or not. This sensor opens up a whole new world of potential smart home convenience, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how they evolve and improve over the next year or so. Anyway, I'll put links in the description to where you can buy this sensor from if you're interested. Please give this video a like if you found it useful, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for free to see more from me. A massive thank you here to my amazing channel members for supporting the channel. Oh, and my patrons too. I mustn't forget the patrons. If you'd like to support the channel by becoming a member or a patron then check out the links down in the description. In return you'll get early access to my videos and some bonus content too. Thank you for watching, goodbye.